Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for being so faithful in our lives, God. We thank you for just holding us, protecting us. We thank you for guiding us through our lives. We thank you for all that you've done, God, to keep us safe in these times that we're going through right now, God. I ask that you just speak through me, God, today as I deliver this word uh, to everybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First off, I want to thank you guys for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I do believe that God has given me a special word uh, for everybody. Um, this is the last Sunday of the year, and so um, I really want to thank Pastor Benji for allowing me to close out uh, the year uh, 2020 as we get ready to transition into 2021. Um, I know 2020 has been a very difficult year for a lot of people. And 2020 has also put us in a place where we have pretty much been on a faith walk every day of our lives in 2020. Because 2020 has showed us that nobody knows what tomorrow is going to bring. And so we wake up and we begin to go on a faith walk day after day, hoping for the best every day of our lives for the year 2020. And so what I want to do is I want to help us as we begin to walk by faith into 2021. My scripture for today is going to come from Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 7. And it says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything <clears throat> that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man. And God showed his approval of his gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And, it's, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God, who warned him about things that had never happened before. By his faith, Noah condemned the rest of the world, and he received the righteousness that comes by faith. And so as we speak on faith today, I ask that you guys pay close attention to this particular equation that says evidence plus hope equals faith. The word evidence as a noun means a body of facts or information indicating whether a, be a belief or proposition is true or valid. I like watching several court shows and different little trials and everything else. And, and inside of these particular trials, we get to see people go through, and you'll see these lawyers as they sit back and they smirk and they laugh at whoever they're defending against because they may look over to the people and say, hey, don't worry about it because they don't have the evidence. But I have the evidence. And so I can sit here and I can smile and I can smirk. I'm not boasting. But I know I'm about to win because of the evidence that is before me. And these particular verses here basically breaks down and it talks about everybody or a majority of people throughout the Bible that experience some real, true life evidence of faith that God delivered them through or God provided them with. 
And so through this particular faith, these people did some enormous things. And so as I break down these particular things, I have three points I want to speak to you about today. And these three points right here is basically the roadmap to operating in faith as the other people did in the Bible. And the first thing is faith guides. Faith guides. A lot of people may be asking during this particular time, where is God? Where was God in 2020? What happened to God when all of these people, as we wake up every day and we see COVID number rising, we see deaths rising, we see um, protests going crazy, we see people going crazy, we see injustices, we see huge shifts in the world, we see shifts in the economic, uh, in the economic sector, and people are asking, like, where is this God that we serve? Where is this God that we put this trust in? And we have non-believers asking the question to believers, where is this God at? If God was God, why is this happening? And so for Christians to be true, steadfast followers of Christ, they have to understand that faith guides. In Job 23, 8 through 11, it says, Behold, I go for it, but... He is not there and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doeth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps, his way have, kept, have I kept and not decline. In this particular passage right here, we have Job asking pretty much the same question to God. He's saying, where, where is God? What, what is going on? He said, I, I know that, that God exists. I know, I know that he's a protector. I know that I can, I can trust him, but where is he? And then Job comes back and say, nevertheless, regardless of what goes on, regardless of what 2020 looked like, I got faith because I know when God has tested me, when God has took us through these trials, that as we transition to the next level or as we transition to a, a next year, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to excel. I'm going to come forth as pure gold. And so as we understand how faith guides, God operates in a way where he doesn't tell us everything. He may give us just a little snippet of what he wants us to do. Hey, do this. Go this place. I'm not going to give you any more information. I just need for you to move. But true faith allows us to know that God will not forsake us because even as ourself, we have, we have experienced God in a way. And we have the evidence from our past or evidence that we've experienced God in. The second thing that faith does, faith protects. I'm going to say that again. Faith protects. I know many of us, in 2020 suffered from not knowing what the next day was going to look like, not knowing if we were going to have enough food, if we were going to have jobs, if we were going to have toilet paper. We just had, no, we just didn't know. Are we going to have a job the next day? Is the economy going to shut down? And so operating in true faith allowed us to wake up the next day and yes, we had a little concern. You know, as Christians, I believe we still had concern about what was going on. However, true faith allowed us to not be shaken, to not be bothered by what was going on because we had evidence that God has protected us, that God has protected the people of the past. 
And so if God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, the evidence sticks and holds firm that no matter what's going on around us, God protects. And so as we walk into this new era, as we get ready to transition into new vaccines, our new normal, relationships, safety, not being able to be close to our family members. We still have to understand how God works and how faith protects. In Isaiah 43 and 2, it says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the, the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Isaiah 43 is almost similar to Psalm 91. Because I believe that many of us in this year 2020, we lived the Psalm 91 life. Where there was so much going on around us. There was chaos around us. There was sickness around us. Many of us experienced deaths in our families. But in Psalm 91, it says basically that all of these things are going to happen, but it, sh it shall not come near you or your dwelling place. And so as we begin to understand that, how God leads us through these valleys, as God guides us, through life, that through faith, no matter what we see going on around us, no matter what's happening, we understand that God protects us, that God looks out for us. Just a couple days ago, I was talking to my mom, and uh, her and my grandma was in the car together, and they were getting ready to, to go to uh, pick up some groceries. And uh, my mom was at the traffic light, and traffic light turned, turned green. She was looking down, trying to move something around. Someone blew behind her. They blew the horn. And so she was about to get ready to go, but she delayed. And as she was getting ready to go, a uh, big semi ran the red light and came on through the red light and everything else. And so in that particular time, she, she called me and she said, you know what? She said, you know, I, I've been moving so fast in life. I've just been going through the motions. Everything is go, go, go. I get up in the morning, get grandma dressed, get this right here. Got to move this right here. Take the kids to do this right here. And she said, during this particular moment, though it may seem so simple to many people, God protected me. In my job where I work at, I had one of my coworkers that sit right next to me pretty much, interact with me on a daily basis. My coworker had COVID, and they had a stronger strand of COVID. So my coworker had it, her, both of her parents had it, and her, her and our kids had it as well. And so as I, as I sit there and I talk back and forth to her and her, her family, uh, her, her mom and dad begins to deteriorate slowly. And within four days, both mom and dad both passed away. And the only thing that I could think about in this particular time was I was grateful. Man, God, you, you really protected me. It's not to say that she didn't have faith or that her family didn't have faith, because I'm not saying that, you're, you're, that people are going to pass away and that your prayers are not being heard because you don't have faith. I'm saying that faith protects. We don't have a say-so on what goes and how things go. However, in that particular moment, in that season, God protected me, and I'm grateful for that. And the last thing that faith does is faith delivers. And what do I mean by faith de delivers? Meaning that if you stand on faith and you stand on the believe 
of God, as it says here, that you have to understand that if you diligently seek God, that you understand that God is a rewarder of those who seek Him, meaning that His Word is going to stand true. And so He is going to deliver on the things that He said He's going to deliver on. He's going to protect you, as He said, because again, we're standing on the evidence of things that God has done. And so if you think back over your past, if you think back over 2020, and I know people like to say, man, 2020 was a horrible year. But I guarantee you there's some other people that said 2020 actually was a good year. 2020 actually was a good year for me as well. 2019 wasn't so friendly to me because I lost a lot of people in 2019. But if you think back to how God has kept you, how God has protected you, they protected your family, He protected your friends, God protected your income, God protected journey. Most churches are shutting down right now. Journey's built in a parking lot. That's what you call favor, protection. And so, in Psalms 40, 9 through 10, it says, I have told the glad news of deliverance in in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. And if, as David speaks here, David is a person that has walked by faith. David is the person that walks out there by faith to take on his biggest challenge. And most people are saying like, oh, you know what? He just, he just had it in him. He had the skills. However, it was a faith walk for him because God had already guided him through these particular things. God had already trained him up. And he knew that God was going to protect him as he got ready to walk this particular course. And so I know there's many people out there right now that's anticipating. What is 2021 going to look like? We're in the middle of a presidential transition. We still got COVID. We still got protests going on. What is 2021 going to look like for us? And the only thing that I can tell you is that if you go into 2021 without faith, you're going to struggle. But if you go into 2021 understanding that God himself shows the reality of what we hope for and that he provides for us the evidence of things that's unseen through faith in God the same faith that Abraham had that Moses had that David had that God is a rewarder to those who seek Him. If we go into 2021 knowing that by faith all things are possible, 2021 will be a completely different year for us, even if chaos is breaking out all around us. And so, as I close, I ask that We just set aside anything that may be bothering us, anything that we 
that we think, you know, that, that we're still holding on to for 2020. All the loss, a lot of grief that we experience, the insomnia, anxieties. And we say, you know what? I'm just going to put it to the side because I'm just going to walk by faith. I don't have to know what God's doing, but I trust him. I trust him that he's going to protect me, my family, my friends. I trust him that he's going to guide me as I get ready to transition. I trust God that, that he's going to lead us through whatever happens because I have that faith in him. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for just being so gracious to us, God. We thank you for just being a protector of our lives, God. We thank you for allowing us to be in the year 2020, God. Many people didn't make it through, God. But yet and still, we're here, God, serving you, praising you, God, worshiping you, God. And we're grateful for that, God. We're thankful for your protection, for your guidance, God. And I ask God as we, as we get ready to transition into a new year, God, that you just make our hearts right, God. And you allow us to be closer to you and to believe more in you, God, not what's being shown on the news and what's being said by other people, God, that we just put all of our faith into you, God, knowing that you're going to take care of us, God. You're going to sustain us, God, no matter what happens around us. And we thank you, God, for everything that you're doing and that you're going to do, God, in our lives and this next year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so there may be a couple people out there online Today may be the day for you. You may want to give your life to Christ. You may want to just say, you know what? I've been struggling. It's, I think it's time that, you know, that I just turn it over. I'm a, I'm a control freak. I want to know how everything goes. If I don't have that, then, you know, I'm struggling. And so today, if you want to commit your life to God, I, I ask that you just, you pray. Seek out God. Spend that time with God as we get ready to transition into this new year. And know that as you accept God into your life, as you welcome God into your life, that you're welcome in protection, you're welcome in guidance, and you're welcome in deliverance into your life. And so I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. I hope you guys have a great week. And we just want to make sure that everybody, everybody, just seek God as much as you can. Amen. Have a good week.